the main uh, topic of, uh, of my talk in this meeting has been uh, on the mechanisms of bleeding. Um, because uh, the bleeding at perseverance of using aspirin is uh, located in the GI tract, I focus the mechanisms of uh, bleeding uh, essentially in the GI tract. It's very well known that aspirin, even low dose aspirin, such as uh, 75 milligrams or 100 milligrams per day, is associated with an increased risk of bleeding. The actual risk is very small, uh, but because there are uh, hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people, as taking low dose aspirin around the world. Obviously, we are just dealing with an uh, important number of patients developing an upper or lower gastrointestinal bleeding. Today, uh, it's clear that not everyone taking aspirin has the same risk. Only a very few number of people uh, develop a GI bleeding. In fact, we understand that only about mm, aspirin induces three extra bleeds per uh, 10,000 uh, patients per year. So it's not very much. So the, the, the real uh, issue here is who is at risk of developing a GI bleeding. Today we have some clinical factors. We know that uh, the elderly and those uh, who uh, have a previous ulcer history are at the highest risk of developing a GI bleeding. But we also know that uh, it may be some uh, genetic background uh, in, in, this, uh, in these patients. So we are doing research in trying to uncover which uh, genetic factors are behind this risk. Anyone uh, being prescribed with, um, uh, with low dose aspirin uh, should be um, screened for potential risk factors. So then anyone having uh, some of these risk factors, such as, as I mentioned before, uh, age older than 70, a previous ulcer history, should receive prevention therapy. And we have very good prevention therapy today. So these uh, patients at risk should receive a gastroprotective agent, such as a proton pump inhibitor. Um, probably, we also believe that if they have a H. pylori infection, helicobacter pylori infection, probably is, uh, is a good way uh, to prevent uh, problems by, eradication, by eradicating uh, the infection. Today it's very clear that uh, aspirin can prevent colorectal cancer. So the, the real issue here is um, first of all to develop uh, clear guidelines uh, for those patients who uh, should benefit by receiving aspirin. And then in this situation, I think that uh, we have different factors to be balanced. Uh, first of all, we need to put in the benefits those patients who need aspirin because of the prevention of cardiovascular events. Then the uh, benefits for those who, who are receiving aspirin should um, have a reduction in the risk of colorectal cancer. And on the other hand, we should just put on the balance those risk for developing bleeding. So then it's very important to uh, describe who is the population that will benefit uh, with aspirin the most. And that's part of the research ongoing today. And we are also just uh, trying to understand uh, that population. We still are a little bit far from that, 
not very far, but uh, we believe that probably uh, the population over the age of 50 are those who may benefit, if, especially if they have a colorectal cancer family history, they, they may benefit from, uh, with aspirin treatment. Because, uh, especially if they have also a uh, risk factor for cardiovascular uh, events, so they may benefit from having a reduction in the uh, colorectal cancer risk, a reduction uh, in the uh, cardiovascular uh, risk at the cost of a minimum risk of having a bleeding event. But also, I think it's important to understand the, the, the different weight of the, of the events. So probably it's not the same to have a bleeding event than a myocardial infarction. So uh, the impact on the quality of life may be very different. So, and, the, and, and still we need to, to work on these particular issues. To me, it's very clear that the only potential use for aspirin in this particular uh, uh, balance and risk should be uh, around 100 milligrams. Anything going beyond 300 milligrams, I think that this is going to be uh, difficult to accept in terms of risks and benefits. I've been also working um, um, in collaboration with uh, uh, Paola Patrignani and Carlo Patrono in understanding the mechanisms of uh, uh, aspirin in the prevention of colorectal cancer. We believe that uh, um, one of the main uh, effects in prevention of cancer depends on the inhibitory action of platelets with aspirin but our recent studies suggest that also aspirin is able to acetylate for up to 24 hours um, the COX enzyme in colorectal cancer uh, cells and in colonic cells. And I think that this is an important issue uh, uh, in, the, in our way to understanding the mechanisms uh, in, w in, in which w uh, in the way that aspirin prevents cancer.